A year and a half ago, I made a rare opinion piece video along with a companion blog article asking if Home Assistant could be headed for trouble. I even indicated a possible death sentence for Home Assistant. Well, it's time for an update. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Now, in my original video and blog article, I stated my love for Home Assistant, and it was this love and heavy investment in my own smart home that had me concerned about the direction or lack thereof of Home Assistant. In the video, blog article, and as you can imagine, a lot of debate in the comment section, a few common themes or areas of concern rose to the top. But a lot has changed in the past year and a half, and Home Assistant just held their annual state of the open home live stream. In this best produced live stream they've ever done, they addressed nearly every concern that I had in that original video and shared some other very exciting news, so I felt like it was time to do an update. So I'll talk about some of those major themes or areas of concern from before and why they were areas of concern at that time and where we stand as of now. One of the themes asked the question about whether Home Assistant could or even should be trying to compete with some of the big tech or big boys in the already established home automation market. We're talking companies like Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, Apple HomeKit, maybe even Samsung SmartThings. At the time, it seemed like Home Assistant was putting a lot of their effort towards making things easier for beginners an easier onboarding process, a lot of point and click UI editors for things like automations and scripts and helpers, sometimes to the detriment of more advanced features that some of us had come to know and love. They really seem to be going after that kind of beginner market that might be using things like Google Assistant or Amazon Smart Speaker, but they still had a reputation as being really technical. Rarely did you ever hear Home Assistant mentioned in mainstream smart home technology articles like you would always hear about Google and Amazon and Apple. Yeah, you could find them in some deep dive articles where they were often mentioned uh, in the same breath of things like Demotics or maybe even OpenHab. Yes, those systems are still around, but when was the last time you heard anything about them? But the big concern was there were never any goals or long-term plans shared with the community. What did Home Assistant want to be when it grew up? And what were we going to have to give up to get there? And was it really the best use of the limited resources available for Home Assistant development to focus on trying to compete with the big boys? And now? We have passed 1 million installations. That is, that is just a lot to think about, right? That's right, over 1 million active Home Assistant users. Now, while Home Assistant obviously still is not a Google or an Apple or an Amazon, they are starting to become a major player in the smart home automation market. And you're starting to see them mentioned in mainstream technology articles alongside Google, Amazon, and Apple. This is great news because it also means it's starting to draw the attentions of manufacturers of devices who are now starting to label their devices as works with Home Assistant as well as works with Google and works with Amazon. So a huge congratulations to the folks at Nabakasa and all the other developers and contributors to the Home Assistant project. I guess you knew what you were doing all along. It's just really those goals have never been shared with the community as a whole. But that was also rectified in this latest live stream. They shared not only the short-term, but the long-term goals and roadmap for Home Assistant, and it was greatly appreciated. Now, granted, roadmaps change as time goes on and based on outside factors in the market, so it's hoped that every annual live stream will include updates to this roadmap and the goals for Home Assistant. Another theme or question being asked was how would Matter impact the future of Home Assistant? At the time of my original video, the first full Matter specification had just been released, and it was all everybody was talking about. Matter was going to allow all of your devices to operate locally on your network without internet or a cloud account from a vendor. Amazon had added a Zigbee thread radio to their hubs, and Google had even developed a preview or beta version of an advanced script editor using YAML, no less, that were going to allow you to create advanced automations. All this struck right at the heart of what makes Home Assistant great. Local interoperability of all different types of devices without an internet connection and the ability to do advanced automations. So how is this going to impact the future and the future growth of Home Assistant? And now, well, it's a little too early to make a final call on Matter, but let's just say it's not necessarily rolling out as originally envisioned. It is taking time, and you're also starting to see fragmentation in the market. 
where some features of a device will be available via Matter, but other features, especially advanced features, are only going to be available via a cloud account or an internet connection. And as far as Amazon and Google are concerned, there seems to be a lot of pullback towards future development of their smart speaker market. There were rumors that Amazon was going to get out of the smart speaker market altogether. And Google, like every other company, seems to be putting all of their effort into AI to the detriment of the Google Assistant. In fact, they're even trying to force Gemini down your throat to replace Assistant, but it doesn't yet have the ability to control a lot of devices. And that script editor, it's still in open preview, and who knows if it will actually come out. It doesn't seem like Google Assistant is getting a lot of love as all their effort goes into AI. And if Matter does play out, no problem. Home Assistant is already part of the Matter Alliance and have already started introducing Matter features into the base Home Assistant. So they're well positioned whether Matter does or doesn't play out for the future. So therefore, long term, I don't think Matter is going to have a big effect on the success of Home Assistant one way or the other. Another common theme or concern that I expressed and was reflected by a lot of others in the comments was about the future of YAML or the ability to do advanced configurations within Home Assistant. Now, honestly, this question wasn't even new back when I did that original video. It's been a question that's been raised often throughout the development of Home Assistant. But it seemed like as they were making more and more efforts towards point and click and UI versions of the script editors and more baseline integrations, it seemed like on occasion, little tiny pieces of the ability to do your own advanced configurations were stripped away. And if they were going to go towards that more general consumer audience, how many of those things would be stripped away from the ability to do advanced configurations in favor of point and click? And now, well, I actually posed that question during the state of the open home live stream. And instead of telling you here, let me actually show you the response. I have a, a question from Resin Chem. Resin Chem, maybe, I don't know. Regarding YAML, with more and more integrations moving to the baseline and more investments in the user interface for automation, scripts, and helpers, what is the future for the use of YAML in Home Assistant? Oh, yeah, the, the famous old YAML discussion, right? Well, I, I, I truly believe, and I still strongly believe, that the UI is what made a lot of these things happen that we have seen, right? The growth of last year's and all the features that we've got are thankfully... I think we have the UI to thank for. Nevertheless, I am a fan of YAML automations personally. I do love creating them. And um, yeah, I'm, I, there's no re we have no plans and never made plans to remove those parts. We want automations to be able to accessible in YAML in case you want to do uh, really advanced ones. Um, so yeah, I hope that will be around for a long time in my personal opinion. I found it funny, a little bit of frustration on, on Frank's part there. And as he mentioned, this is the age old question about the future of YAML. It's not a new question. And while there are no guarantees about the long-term viability of YAML, there is a lot of concern from those of us who've been using Home Assistant for a while and may have hundreds, if not thousands of automations and scripts written in YAML. But I do understand the difficulty. In an article with The Verge, Paulus, the founder of Home Assistant, even referenced this about how difficult it is between trying to find the balance between ease of use and advanced or power features. He goes on to say a little later in this article, it might come down to some point in time where there has to be a split of Home Assistant between the point and click and the power users. But at least for the time being, I don't think that YAML is going to go anywhere, at least for things like automations and scripts. And probably one of the biggest concerns, and this was shared by a lot of people down in the comments to my original video, was whether Home Assistant would eventually be sold or acquired by another company and commercialized. As I mentioned at the time, there was a lot of effort being put into things like point and click to grow that Home Assistant base to make it larger and larger. Well, Nabucasa is actually a for-profit corporation. And the fact that they're never sh shared any kind of roadmap or goals for Home Assistant a number of us begin to wonder if the real goal was to make it as large as possible until it could be sold or acquired by a big tech company. And if it was actually acquired or bought by a big tech company, what would happen to Home Assistant longer term? If they spend a lot of money, they're going to make that money back in some way, shape, or form. Does that mean it's going to be commercialized, put behind a, a subscription or a paywall, or require an internet connection? It was probably one of my biggest concerns and why I always kept an eye on other systems out there in case Home Assistant was sold. And now, 
Well, that was probably one of the biggest announcements that came out of the State of the Open Home live stream, and that is complete restructuring and a change in ownership of Home Assistant. The Open Home Foundation. The Open Home Foundation is a nonprofit that fights for privacy, choice, and sustainability in a smart home and for everyone that lives in one. Our mainline projects, Home Assistant and ESP Home, are now owned by the Open Home Foundation. Nobody can buy them anymore. They're owned by a nonprofit bound to its mission. So if anyone was ever worried that I would sell Home Assistant or commercialize it, you don't have to worry anymore. That's no longer possible. So now it's practically impossible for Home Assistant or ESP Home to ever be sold, acquired, or commercialized, which is one of mine and many others' biggest fears. What's more, there are over 320 other additional libraries, apps, drivers, and utilities around Home Assistant that are now also part of the Open Home Foundation and can never be commercialized or locked into a particular vendor. Now, Bocasa will continue as the commercial arm of Home Assistant, managing your Home Assistant cloud and subscriptions and selling hardware, providing financial and other support for the foundation. If you want to know more about the foundation, its founding principles, and how it is set up to operate, I would encourage you to either watch the live stream or check out the new Open Home Foundation website, which I'll leave links to down in the video description. There were a few other minor gripes and complaints in my original content and some of the comments that you had regarding things like the frequency of patches after each update, the number of breaking changes, which I find humorous that they've now relabeled backward incompatible changes, they're still breaking changes, but it does seem like there's been substantial improvement in this area in, over the last year and a half. The number and frequency of patches that come out after each monthly release seems to have substantially dropped, which tells me there's probably a little bit more or better beta testing going on before each new release. Plus the addition of repairs in the Home Assistant front end now gives you substantial lead time whenever there's going to be a major change or sunset of some sort of integration, allowing you time to prepare. So nearly every issue, concern, or really complaint I had from my original video has now been addressed, a lot of those through this most recent State of the Open Home live stream. And I would encourage you to watch that or at least watch portions of that after this video. Given all this taken together, I no longer feel that Home Assistant could be headed for trouble. In fact, I feel Home Assistant is now stronger and more viable long-term than it ever has been. I felt like it was important to issue this updated video to talk about the state of Home Assistant, but I'll be back soon with my normal how-to videos on Home Assistant and DIY electronics. But until that time, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.